Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Mezzone African Motives, still on industrial electronics and one uh, revisions. Uh, still on the person paper that we're looking at uh, February 2022. Uh, now on question number two, which is a continuation from the previous part that we had. Uh, so in this case, we are given uh, on person two, we are not going to waste much time. Let us quickly rush through the questions. On 2.1, we are asked to make a neat labeled sketch of each of the following waveforms each with a peak voltage, you are given that the peak voltage is supposed to be five volts. Okay, 2.11, a sine wave. So remember guys, a sine wave, that's a sine wave, whereby we've got a complete cycle from zero to 360 degrees. Okay, so I'm just going to show you uh, at least a simplified diagram uh, sketch that you can work with in your exams. All right, so that's a sine wave. So in this case, we are given that the peak voltage is supposed to be five volts, so here, we are going to have plus five volts. And on the other side, we are going to have negative five volts like that. So this is zero, uh, 90 degrees, that's zero degrees, 90 degrees at 180 degrees, at 270 degrees and at 360 degrees to make a full cycle. So that is what you're going to have. And this is peak to peak. So here we shall have our peak uh, to peak on this one. Uh, then the cycle, the complete cycle from this part to this part, that's a complete cycle from zero to 360 degrees. Okay, uh, and for definitely this is your time, which is measured in seconds. So that's how uh, we are having our sine wave. Okay, just like what I was saying. So here we're supposed to note of the voltages that you have been given a peak of five volts. So here you'll be having positive five. On the other side, you'll be having a negative uh, five. All right, uh, a square wave on 2.2 and 2.12, we need now a square wave. So a square wave is just take the shape of a square. So that's what you're going to have a one cycle with the peak value, the voltages. Yeah, I think everything is clear. You must have your diagram in form of a square. Uh, then the other part that was 2.13, which is a sawtooth. So a sawtooth is supposed to be like a saw, just the same way a saw look like, and that's a sawtooth, uh, which is having a peak value of five volts and here having negative five volts like that. So one cycle are given from zero uh, to three and so forth. So that's a sawtooth, okay? I think uh, the diagram is clearly uh, drawn. Okay, uh, on 2.2, .2, we are given that state three fold that a uh, Capacitors can develop over a period of time, as we know that capacitors they have some they have some uh, 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 actually faults that they have as, as time goes on, like uh, having uh, a capacitors becoming leaky or having an open circuit or a short circuit. So they are asking you to list those faults. Okay, so I'm just going to list the faults down so that uh, we can work with them. So we have. Uh, the first one, they can develop a short circuit. Okay, we talked about this one. They can become leaky, or they, that is, they'll be leaking a capacitor. Okay, can leak. Uh, electrolyte can, can dry up. Remember, we are using different types of electrolytes. So that electrolyte can end up drying up, and that means it is now having a fault, or it can develop an open circuit. So any of these three, uh, that was the answer that you're supposed to have, remember, you're asked to list any three of the given uh, of the given faults. All right, so I think clear question. Uh, on 2.3, we are now given, draw the ICE symbols of the following components, an ion core inductor. What does an ion core inductor look like? Okay, as you know, guys, an inductor, uh, we've got something like this. I'm just gonna draw them here, an inductor. We have got something of this nature. All right, that's our inductor here. Then you just put these lines. All right, something of this nature, something like that. Okay, so that's an ion core uh, inductor. Then on 2.23, an air core uh, transformer. So that's a transformer here, an air core transformer. You just have to put your transformer this way, simple like that. Okay, a fixed capacitor, or what does a fixed cap a capacitor, just like the way you draw your battery, but this time these two lines, they will be of equal length. That's a capacitor, okay? Then an electrolytic capacitor, that one was a fixed 
what about electrolyte? This one you have to be specific about being positive and negative. So the positive one, we are going to have something of this nature. All right, so we can just even share this and write P, a positive plus. Okay, then uh, the last one is an NPN transistor. As we know, a transistor, it actually looks like this. The only difference on a transistor is on the arrow that you're going to, to have on the, on the emitter. Remember, you are having your base, your collector, and the emitter here. So an NPN transistor, the current, the current is like this, the arrow is facing out. If it is PNP, then we shall have it going inside like that. So that's the difference that we have between an NPN and a PNP transistor. So this is our NPN uh, transistor. All right, so five marks for just knowing the symbols, guys, just to draw the symbols. Five marks is a lot of marks in exam, guys, don't play. Uh, with five marks, it's actually a lot. If you are in exam, you can't uh, just lose these marks like that. All right. Anyways, uh, on 2.4, we are given a circuit diagram, which is on DC. There's a DC circuit. So from the DC circuit, we are given, refer to the diagram above and calculate the following. All right. That's our diagram. We have got uh, VR, which is the voltage. Uh, that's our supply voltage here. Uh, positive, as you can see, the flow of current from the positive. Go to this part, we've got uh, uh, the first current. This is your R1 here. So that will be our I1, which is actually the total current. It branches into this resistor. We've got I2. It branches into this resistor. We've got I3, like that. Okay. So the question on 2.41 was for us to calculate the total resistance of the second, the total resistance of the second. Okay. Uh, let us analyze what we have on our circuit diagram here. Uh, the first thing that we can see is that we have got a parallel combination of R2 and R3, these two resistors, they are in parallel, then in series to the 10 ohm resistor. All right, so let's start by the parallel combination. Okay, so this is 2.41. I'm just going to calculate even here because of the space that we have here. We can just utilize this space here. So we are going to work with the parallel combination. Remember for the parallel combination, you've got two options. You can use one over RP, which is equal to one over R2 plus one over R3, the resistors that are in parallel, or you can just say your RP is equivalent to the product over the sum of the resistors because they are just two resistors, which is the best formula that I prefer working with product over sum. The product of the two resistors, that is our R2, by R3 over R2 plus R3. So that can give us the resistance for the parallel combination. All right, so in the parallel combination, we've got R2 having 15 ohms times R3 having 20 ohms over the sum of the two, which is 15 plus 20. The rest, it's you and your calculator, guys. We can simplify uh, this part, just have your fraction, put 15, by 20 over 15 plus 20. So this is 15 plus 20 like that. That's uh, as a decimal, all right, 8,5714, which is 8,571. Okay, so we've got 8,571 ohms. That is for the parallel combination. So uh, at the end, we are going to see that our diagram now can be reduced. Remember, we have combined these two resistors. So it's now a single resistor. So it's then it will be connected in par in series with this one. It will be a series combination. Okay, let me indicate what I am trying to say here. Uh, we had the resistor which was in a series like this. We had our voltage supply. Uh, the series resistor, which is our R1. Then now the combination of the resistors that we got in parallel here, so this is what you're going to have. So this is our RP, 8,571 ohms, and that R1, which we had before, and R1 was equal to 10 ohms. So we are going to have our R1 here being 10 ohms. So by just seeing this, these two resistors, they are now in series. So that means our RS is going to be the combination of the two, which is R1, plus RP. Okay, so we're going to add the two, which is R1 having 10 ohms plus RP having 8,571 ohms. And as you can see, 10 plus 
that is 18,571 ohms. So this is the total, not RS, it's no longer RS, this is now the total resistance. So you can write it as RT. So RT representing the total resistance for the given circuit is 18,57 uh, ohms. Okay, so that's what we actually had uh, from this combination of resistors that we had. All right, on 2.42, the total current, the total current flow in the circuit, what is the total current flow in the circuit? Remember, we have the total voltage, all right? Sorry, we have our total voltage here, which is 20 volts. And we need to calculate the total current. We have also the total resistance. We calculated the total resistance on 2.41. So that means the total current can be obtained from these two, all right? So like I said, I'm just going to use this space. So on 2.42, uh, the total current is going to be the total voltage uh, over the total resistance that we calculated. Okay, the total voltage being 20 volts, we saw that this was 20 volts here. So it is going to be 20 divided by 18,571. Okay, so if we divide this, we are going to obtain the total current in the circuit, all right? So that is the total uh, current of the whole circuit that we have. All right, so let's divide and see what you're going to have uh, from our calculator. Uh, this is uh, 20 divided by 18,571. All right, that's 1,0769, which is 1,077. Okay, 1,077 amps. This is current. And current, remember, it is measured in amperes, which is amps. All right, uh, the current flow on 2.43, they are now asking you to calculate the current flow through the 10 ohm resistor. All right, let's see the 10 ohm resistor. Where do we have it? All right, this is our 10 ohm resistor, guys, the, 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 the one that we have here. And if you have to cross-check, the 10 ohm resistors are connected to supply. And the current, which is our total current, which flows here, is the same that is going to flow through this resistor. All right, it will, it will then branch here having current two, current three, but that supply current is the one that is going to definitely flow through R1. So definitely this is not going to change. It is going to remain as 1,077 amps. All right, I don't know why they are just giving two marks just to write this answer. Okay, reasoning guys, just to reason that, just to reason is something else. You see two marks for that. So that's what we had guys from this question. Um, uh, that we had question number two, February 2022, uh, Industrial Electronics N1 from Amazon African Motives till we meet again.